Hi all, hope you've been staying safe and well. Um, today we're going to move on to have a look at another of the romantic poems in the anthology collection, which is Sonnet 29, I Think of Thee. Um, so there's a, lots of immediate connotations that we get from a poem like this. We know that it's a sonnet, so therefore we're looking at um, generally a romantic poem, a connection between two characters. In this case, it's a, a poem about two um, poets, two lovers who were both, both poets. Uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning and about her husband Robert Browning. Now this poem is interesting in the sense that it was initially a private poem um, from Elizabeth to her husband, um, or to be her, her husband to be at the time, um, and he encouraged her to publish it. So it's actually very deep and very meaningful and very personal um, in that sense, um, and very very interesting to look at. A nice one to compare with uh, poems such as Love's Philosophy, poems like Sing Song, which are about deep, passionate and uh, romantic love. Uh, so I hope this is really useful for you and we'll be talking through it as we do in those five stages of meaning, imagery, tone, structure and language. Okay, so the meaning of this poem is the feelings that the poet has when separated from her partner and that deep longing and deep desire that she has for him. So she uses the imagery of um, her partner as a tree and her thought about him as vines that go around. Now, initially, this might seem as quite like a, a pleasant image, the idea that we have the tree and the vines um, need the tree to grow. However, as the poem goes on, she becomes more concerned that actually if she's constantly thinking about him, that might actually obscure what he's really like. The vines will hide the tree and the, um, they will be actually, as she calls it, en en englobed within uh, the greenery. Now, what she says is she needs, he, ne he needs to renew his presence. He needs to be near her. And at that point, they can shake off these thoughts and she can see him for who he really is. So what we have is this deep connection between the poet and her partner in the sense that she wants to be close to him and she thinks about him often when he's not there but she's worried about how her thoughts might be um, obscuring what he's really like and the fact that she wants him to be close to her and near to her is, is the most important of this poem. The poem's full of exclamatory language, it's full of these um, deep and meaningful expressions. The poet is not holding back any emotions here, she's expressing how she really feels. As we already talked about in the introduction with the poem, this was meant to be private, it was never intended to be published, but later on it was published and we get a really personal perspective from Elizabeth 
Elizabeth Barrett Browning's point of view here. Um, so lots of interesting meanings behind the poem. Uh, if we get our head around what the natural imagery is, which we'll look at in the next section, and what that's implying and what that's um, revealing to us, then um, the, the meaning of the poem comes a little bit clearer. But essentially, the, the concern about separation, the concern about thinking about him too much, and the worry about whether he will be like that when he returns is the key core aspect of the meaning of this poem. Okay, so imagery-wise within this poem, the main images that you have to understand and you have to get to grips with are the natural imagery that the poet chooses to use to represent her partner and her thoughts about him. So she uses language describing a tree to describe her, her fiancé, her, her husband-to-be. Now, what we have with this is the connotations of uh, steadfastness, of sturdiness, of something that is that encourages growth, of something that is natural, of something that is powerful and strong. So, for example, in line two of the poem, we have uh, my thoughts to twine about me as wild vines about a tree. And then we have it described putting out broad leaves and soon there's naught to see except the straggling green which hides the wood. Now, what we have here are the thoughts about him when he's away that are re represented by vines. So she says wild vines about a tree put out broad leaves and straggling green which uh, cover up the tree. Now, what she says is that later on in the poem, she asked him to renew his presence, to be to to come home, if you like, and to to see her, to meet her. And at that point, he can, which is in line nine, rustle thy boughs and shake thy set thy trunk all bare. So that these thoughts of him, because he's there in the moment, are shaken away. And actually, that's much better because the thoughts would could potentially strangle the tree. They could um and sphere it too much and then you cannot be seen and ultimately affect the health of the tree. So we have this interesting imagery where it's almost like the poet it feels that her thoughts of him are, are trying to almost like cloud what he's really like and the, and the, the actual version of the tree that is there without her thoughts is more beautiful, more strong. Okay. So it's quite an interesting one. It, it's quite um, self-deprecating in the sense that the, the poet thinks that her thoughts are, are, are wrong in this sense, that, they're, that they could potentially do damage to the tree. We could also argue that there are some um, elements of like, sort of erotic imagery in here as well, like sexualized imagery. The idea of like um, rustle thy bows and setting thy trunk all bare, obviously implying like a sort of nakedness, if you like. And you could also argue elements of like phallic imagery with, with the tree. Um, and, and the sturdiness of that. So there are, again, with this poem being private, it might be that there's some more deep and meaningful connections there. Ultimately, if I was looking at imagery, what I would be looking for here is the use of the natural imagery of the, the partner as the tree and what the connotations of that are and what the connotations of those vines are. The, the symbiotic relationship that they have with them together, but also the nature that the vines can be quite strangling and quite choking, and there could be a negative connotation to that if she's spending all her time thinking about him rather than actually spending time with him. Okay, so it's quite an interesting dual interpretation that we have there. Um, other images that we have potentially are the fact that when he arrives, it's this very dramatic loss of these thoughts. The vines are burst and shattered everywhere, which we have in line 11. And also towards the end, um, we have in line 13, I breathe a new, uh, breathe within thy shadow a new air. So that the fact that when he's there, the um, the air around even becomes sweeter and becomes better because of that. So lots of interesting imagery is there, and the extended metaphor across the poem is probably one that you want to be looking at in most detail. Okay, so tonally, the poem is quite interesting in the sense that there are lots of feelings, lots of emotions here. We've already talked about how it was private, and therefore this is actually um, very deep and very meaningful for the poet in the way she's writing. So we have certainly a sense of longing in, within the poem, and a sense of um, desire for her partner. So, for example, the very first line, I think of thee, that exclamation mark and the excitedness of that language gives a really clear impression of someone who is um, full of 
emotion and full of passion, if you like. Um, she has a longing for her partner to be a stable and strong presence in her life. She describes him as all my palm tree and that sort of um, loving and affectionate way of describing him there gives a sense of like her pride in him and her desire for him to be a strong and um, permanent part of her life. Obviously the intensity within the poem is quite significant. We can look at ideas like um, who are dearer, better, um, instantly renew thy presence and the desire that's within that, the intense and emotive desire that we have within that is significant, is important and helps to uh, further develop the, the poet's feelings for her partner there. Um, ultimately the poem is a celebration of his return so by the end of the poem where we have I do not think of thee, I am too near thee so we have this just juxtaposition between the fact that when he's there she doesn't have to think about him because the um, his presence is very is very um, being near her is enough and we don't she doesn't have these straggling vines that um, are, are potentially going to obscure what he's actually like so really intense and really passionate poem um, and a lot that we can discuss there when we consider the idea of tone. Again, structurally, there's some really interesting ideas that are emerging from Sonnet 29. The first of which we've already discussed in a little bit of detail is the fact that it is a sonnet. That 14 line um, poem, which has the consistent rhythm and consistent rhyme structure. Now, the beat and the rhythm of the poem is meant to reflect the heartbeat with the stressed iams, so that it's almost like de done. And we will have um, five of these per line. I think of the my thoughts do twine a bud, for example, and it's meant to reflect a heartbeat. It's meant to reflect that deep and more connection between the poet and her partner. We also have the idea of changes and shifts across the poem. So we talk about initially the, the positive imagery of the natural language, but actually it becomes more negative as the poem goes on, and the poet worries that the the vines that are growing of her thoughts are actually um, suffocating. Um, her partner and obscure what the these women are really like. Uh, by the end of the poem, his return to her um, allows him to shake off the thoughts and allows him to be seen in his true glory, if you like. So the shift in, um, in the poem is a really interesting structural device that the poet chooses to use. And the a declarative certainty at the end is also a really interesting structural device. A lot of poems end with uncertainty. In this sense, she ends with an absolute certainty of I am too near thee. So we have this, um, the, the certain nature of what she's saying gives a sense of finality to the poem, an absolute sense of closure, which is quite unusual when a lot of poems end with a sense of more uncertainty, which gives again a level of um, connection between them in their relationship. Language-wise, there are a few interesting techniques that we might want to consider from um, the poetic toolkit, if you like, what the poet's trying to do to, to access the meaning and the, um, the tone of the poem. The first of which is this extended metaphor of her partner as a tree. And we can focus on that and what, it, um, what the connotations of it are, the strength that it shows, the deep-rooted nature in her life, the, um, the ability to essentially like for other things to grow around the tree. The tree is the source of life, if you like, and the fact that she sees her partner as this is, is quite significant and quite important. The fact that she sees her thoughts about him as vines and the extended metaphor there is quite interesting because vines obviously it, it grow very quickly and they can very quickly, and she describes it as entosphere, um, the, um, the, the tree, and the fact that it almost like seems like a weed, like a pest, is quite interesting. The fact that the vines and the thoughts are nothing compared to the tree itself. Therefore, it's shown that um, his presence is actually much more important to her than the thoughts of that. We have deep ex exclamatory language across the poem, lots of exclamations. So, for example, the first line, I think of thee. Um, we have um, later on in the poem, um, I will not have my thoughts instead of thee who are dearer, better. And it's almost like a debate that's raging on inside her, like this first person narrative is quite significant and quite important and how she 
uses her personal thoughts and feelings to to deeply and emotively connect with the relationship. Um, we have a lot of use of birds like Rudy three, a triad. For example, in line eleven, burst shattered everywhere, and um, to show this di uh, vivid description of his arrival and how his, the thoughts and the, the vines have sort of exploded away at that point. Um, the personal address, the fact that she, she uses my palm tree, leaves that second person pronoun my, um, is significant. Um, sorry, first person pronoun my is significant as it shows that she has ownership over him and the fact that they have a, a, a relationship uh, together is significant and is important. Um, we have repetition at the final line of, I do not think of thee, I am too near thee. We have the sort of the repeat, repeated use of the first person pronoun there, I being significant and giving a, a, a understanding that she's going round and round with these thoughts in her head until he arrives, um, which is significant and important. So it's some really interesting language devices being used here, and obviously um, a, a, a lot of them to annotate, but particularly look at the idea of the natural imagery and the extended metaphor and how it's used throughout the poem. Okay, for you to do, um, obviously I've put two tasks at the end of the uh, video, the first of which is fairly familiar, it's to make notes on those five strands which we'll look at with any single poem, which is uh, meaning, imagery, tone, structure and language. They're the core aspects of your analysis and what you will need to know about the poem. The second thing is to have a look at a comparison, and I've gone for the idea of passionate love, uh, and I've chosen to have a look at sing song as a comparison. Now, it might not be the, um, the most natural fit, for um, this poem, uh, with it being a completely different context, a completely different time period, and a completely different sort of um, ethnicity in the sense of that context. It's very, very different, but it is a really, really useful one to start to get some comparisons in there. Um, so have a go at that, see what you can do. Uh, until next time, um, stay safe and take care.